You know, if you're taking chemistry, chances are excellent you're going to need a little bit of algebra. You see, because without algebra, you can't do any of the mathematics in chemistry. So now, if you're not terribly comfortable with algebra, I'm going to show you how to do algebra. At least some very simple, basic stuff. This is an equal sign. Stuff on both sides has to be equal on both sides of the equal sign. That's why it's called an equal sign. X is a variable. It's a number whose value we don't know. And that's the whole point of doing algebra, to figure out what that unknown value is. 2x equals 6. Well, that means that if you take whatever x is and double it, you'll get 6. So how do you solve for x? Well, it's simple. If you want to solve for a variable, you want to get it by itself on its side of the equal sign. Now, right now, 2 is kind of getting in the way of x being by itself. So we've got to get it out of there. Now, because 2 and x are multiplied by each other, we got to do the antidote for multiplication, which is division. If we divide both sides by what is keeping x from being by itself, 2, then 2 and 2 will simplify to just 1, that will leave you with 1x, equals 6 over 2. What's 6 over 2? Well, duh, half of 6 is 3. Notice what we've done here. By dividing both sides by 2, I've taken what's in the numerator and thrown it in the denominator on the other side. You may know this as cross multiplication. In a problem like this, when you want to solve for x, x is in the denominator. So your first goal is to get it the heck out of the denominator. I mean, you could get 2 out of there, but you'd still have x in the denominator. And that's not doing anybody any good. So what you do is you cross multiply. 5 times 2 is 10. 3 times x is 3x. And now that x is out of the denominator, we can solve for x like we normally would. 3 is keeping x from being by itself. So divide both sides by 3 to cancel it out. And now 10 divided by 3 is equal to 3.33, blah, 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 etc., etc., etc. Take a look at the topic on rounding if you want to know about how to round this. But again, notice that I got rid of that 3 in the numerator by shoving it in the denominator of the other side. We call that selective cross-multiplying. Now in chemistry, instead of having numbers and one variable to deal with, you're going to have an equation, which is an equal sign with stuff on either side of it. Letters that represent measurements that you can take. For example, density equals mass divided by volume. And we could be asked to solve for density. Real easy, just plug your numbers for mass and volume in. Simple. We could be asked to solve for mass though, and mass is not by itself. So here are the rules if you want to get mass by itself. First, circle the variable you're trying to solve for. This keeps you focused on it. Then, get all the other stuff to the other side. Now, an old physics teacher here showed me a really cool trick. If you want to get rid of something in the denominator, then just cross multiply it up to the numerator on the other side. Now it's gone. It has the same effect as multiplying both sides by volume. So, mass equals volume times density. Once again, if you want to solve for mass, you have to get mass by itself. So take what's keeping mass from being by itself, it's in the denominator, so cross it up to the numerator on the other side. Now I hear you saying, but there is no denominator on the other side, how do I know that's the numerator? Well, you know that x is really x over 1, right? So you could say that this was over 1. So there really is a denominator. It's just a hidden denominator. You don't need to deal with it at all. Okay, so now what if you want to solve for volume? Well, volume is in the denominator, and one of the rules is this. Very simple. If you've got something you're trying to solve for that's in the denominator, get it out of the denominator. Look, mass is sitting on it. It's being squashed. Get it out of there. Rescue it. Take it and cross multiply it over to the other side. Okay? Hey, that looks just like the formula we had just a minute ago. Yeah, but now we're not solving for mass, we're solving for volume. Now, now that we've gotten volume out of the denominator, it's still not by itself. It's being multiplied by d. So to get d out of there, cross it over to the denominator of the other side. Volume equals mass over density. 
You see what we did? We basically just swapped them. We crossed them over. Volume was multiplied up to here, density was divided down to there, and mass was just sitting here going, I don't know what's going on, but I'm dizzy. Okay, now for the next example of a kind of math problem you can solve, we've got all these variables, and you might look at this and say, but, but P's up there twice, and V's up there twice, and T's up there twice. Well, actually, what this stands for is pressure under condition one, pressure under condition two. So let's say I had a pressure of 100 atmospheres and I doubled it, the second pressure would be 200 atmospheres. So what we're saying is we've got pressure, volume, and temperature under one condition and we're changing it to pressure, volume, and temperature under a different condition. Each one of these, P1 is one variable, V1 is a different variable, T1 is yet another variable. So don't let these little things down here get you. Let's suppose we're going to solve for V2. So we circle it. Okay, now V2 is not by itself. How do we get it by itself? This one's actually real easy. Take T2, it's in the denominator, cross it over so it's in the numerator of the other side. P2 is keeping V2 from being by itself, so cross it over. It's in the numerator, throw it in the denominator of the other side. Now V2 is all by itself and you can just plug in the values from your word problem and solve. And the reason this works is because the units for pressure will cancel, the units for temperature will cancel, and leave you with the units for volume, which is what you're trying to solve for. I know another question. Does it matter if I make it P2 times T1 or T1 times P2? Doesn't matter. Remember, XY equals YX. It's the same thing. 3 times 4 equals 4 times 3. It doesn't matter when you're multiplying what order you multiply them in. And the same thing goes for algebra. It doesn't matter what order you put them in, as long as they're on the correct side of the division line. You could have made this P1, V1, T2. It doesn't matter what order they go in, because when you multiply them together, you're going to get the same result. Okay, let's take a different example. Let's say we want to solve for T2. Oh no, T2's in the denominator! It's also the name of a movie starring a very scary robot who heals himself after getting shot. No, T2! Well, in order to get it by itself, the first thing we've got to do is get it the heck out of the denominator. And the way we do that is, well, actually there's a whole bunch of ways to do that. Let's do it the easy way. We're going to cross T2 up to here, okay? We're going to cross it up to there. Now, it's not in the denominator anymore. So, what's keeping T2 from being by itself? Well, P1 and V1. They're in the numerator, from in the denominator of the other side. There you go. P1, V1, boop, we just cross multiplied it over, gone. All right, T2 is still not by itself. It's got this T1 in the denominator. If it's in the denominator, boop, throw it up to the numerator on the other side. You have now rearranged the equation to solve for the variable you're trying to solve for. And that's basically how you rearrange an equation in chemistry. And you can apply this to a tremendous amount of things over the course of the year. See, basically all mathematics is, is a way of demonstrating relationships between different variables and allowing you to make predictions. If, for example, you know when you do a graph, right? And you say, well, I know what X's value is. Let's go up to the graph and then go across to Y value like that. So here's X and we can solve for Y just by going to a graph. Well, what a math equation does is it takes a graph and creates a mathematical function out of that graph. For example, it could be a linear function. And you know how that goes, y equals mx plus b. Well, if you know what these numbers are, if you know what y is, and you know what the slope and the y-intercept are, it's real easy to solve for x. Just plug it into the equation and solve for x. So basically what a math equation does is it allows you to make predictions if I do this to this variable, what will happen to that variable without needing to have a graph in front of you? And that's really what math is used for in science, to show relationships and to build a model of reality that allows us to make predictions based on new information. Now, I know a lot of people are afraid of math. There's no reason to be afraid of math. Math is no different than any other tool that you need to learn how to use to solve something. Did you learn how to play that complex video game? Well, there's a set of rules you have to go by, right? Certain controls you have to do in order to do certain things. Math is no different. If you learn the basic rules behind math, just like any other tool, there's absolutely no limit to what you can accomplish with it.